and three. Two? One? No, and you don't say two or one. You just, you just. Mark anyway. it. Mark it. <laughs> it's the secret show, a regular feature every Wednesday on this very channel, Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes. Mark Sargent and I, I'm Patricia Steer. We will discuss, believe it or not, Flat Earth. Yes, we will. We always do. Although sometimes people say we don't, but we do. What is this flat earth you speak of? <laughs> exactly. We'll also discuss what's happening in our flat earth community, and we'll discuss all sorts of things. Uh, I don't know, not limited to anything, because the sky is the limit, probably literally. Ah, I see what you did there. <laughs> We've got some special guests coming in in a bit, Robbie D of the channel Celebrate Truth and Brian Mullen. They will talk about with us the upcoming Flat Earth International Conference, which is on Thursday and Friday, the 9th and 10th of November in Raleigh, North Carolina. And the thumbnail to the video right now, unless I change it, I might later, is actually the Science Museum in Raleigh. And they've got this giant, I think, 75 foot globe. So uh, we're going to talk to them about uh, where the money made by the convention goes because there's been some rumblings within the flat earth community. A few people have said, hey, are you guys out there to make the big bucks? That's what this is all about. And you're gonna be lighting Cuban cigars with hundred dollar bills. <laughs> 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 yeah. Even Patricia, I uh, actually uh, uh, was told that there's a YouTube content provider who was making a video saying that I'm going to have a kissing booth and charge $75 for selfies. No, awesome, actually. like Revenge of the Nerds. <laughs> <laughs> they don't uh, even have those anymore, although yeah. it's weird that they used to have those back in the day. Well, he was completely wrong about that. It's $175 for selfies. And uh, the kissing booth, well, still in negotiation with my agent on that one. Joke, both of those. Come on, let's be serious. <laughs> I don't, I still don't think a selfie is as good as like a signed 8x10. I, I agree with all of that, but I mean, we're not doing that. That's not what this thing is about. But no. it's funny that there have been some YouTube content providers who immediately when they heard there was going to be this, this event, got their backs up and got angry, literally angry about something that they can decide to not go to or go to. It's their own decision. And, you know, just like anything in life that you don't like, just don't participate in it. Yeah. There's a few restaurants nearby here in Houston, Texas, I don't like, but I'm not making a video about how much I hate them. I just don't go to them. So, hey, the world's a big place, probably. <laughs> sure. <laughs> but <laughs> for, for every one of the people, and there's not many out there, for every one of the people no. that, that that are saying, oh, you know, it's it's all, they're thinking of, you know, ulterior mo motives. There's so many people that are excited. I mean, heck, the, the, oh. VIP, the VIP thing sold out last night during my show. There's been so many emails I've received from people asking me questions about it, um, excited about it, just saying, I'm going to be there. I don't know how I'm going to manage to do it, but I'm definitely going to be there. Oh, yeah. Uh, so P anyone within great. driving distance is definitely going. There's yeah. going to be, I think, a lot of people, a lot more people driving there than flying, I think, because it's in the central East Coast. Raleigh is um, a place I don't think I've ever been before. What about you? Know. Yeah. 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 Well, remember I used to do business travel when I was doing proprietary software for yes. years and years. So I've been to Charlotte and Raleigh and I've been in that area. I mean, it's, it's cool. I guess. I've been to it, Charlotte before. It's, it's the location though. It's the, because it's East coast, you get, not only do you get a lot of people from the East coast, but you're going to get the Midwest. Again, anyone within driving distance tougher. If you do an event on the West coast, like, mm. or if you do an event in Vegas, because not a lot of people are going to be driving to Vegas. Well, you know, there was a time when you and I were going to do a Flat Earth conference slash oh, yeah. and we talked about it, and then we never did it. No. But uh, Robbie D and Brian Mullen, who will be joining us shortly, um, along with others, have decided to not talk about it. They just said, let's just put this together and then present it to the community. And yeah. they have with an amazing website. And um, we've discussed this before, and we kind of kept it in our back pocket and teased people with it and said there's a big secret. And of course, uh, 
uh, Ravi was on Globebusters. They were on Globebusters talking about it this past Sunday. Um, mm -hmm. We're in February now. And uh, they've got promo videos out. Other people have done videos. So I would imagine that most people um, have heard about the event. But we want to talk about a couple of the things that, aside from the event and all the great things, just the money aspect, just because there's been questions. So, hey, you know, you've sure. got questions, we've got answers here at The yep. Secret Show. So uh, let me check and make sure that Robbie and uh, Brian have received the link just to make sure there's not some kind of weird, crazy internet problem going on. Yeah. Uh, we also have some emails we're going to read. I'm going to go into chat and say hello. And we have, uh, I posted this on my Facebook and you shared it with me too. There was a uh, person who carved a Google flat earth. Oh, wait, it's my cat's walking here. In giant letters. Yeah. In giant letters. In the, Cal Cal in the California hillsides of uh, was it Riverside. Yes, it's amazing. But somebody scratched out the word flat earth and it just now says Google. So uh, <laughs> the, 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 the article's still out there, but I can't, I haven't found a way to rip it yet. Mm. So, well, we are here with Robbie D and Brian Mullen. And if anyone has their, I hear some echo. I'm not sure where that's coming from. So maybe we could kill something. Well, hey, anyway, uh, Robbie and Brian, hello, and thanks for popping on the show. Thanks for having us. Doesn't seem like you're, uh, I don't know, maybe there's something weird going on. Hey, can you hear me all right? Yes, I can, but it doesn't look like your images are popping up when I speak. Oh, Google, why do you do this to us? Mark, tell me, are, are Robbie and Brian's faces popping up when they speak? I don't know, they haven't, so they're talking. <laughs> How are you doing? This is uh, Robbie. Yep, Davidson. yep, I can see him. I can okay, see him. Okay, good, good. Here's, here's Brian. Am I popping up? It doesn't look like yep, my yep. video is working for some reason. Brian's popping up. All right, good. There's like a weird delay, but we'll ignore it. So, gentlemen, gentlemen, thank you for coming on. I truly appreciate it. I'm excited about the event. Um, I don't know who wants to take the lead here and just give a brief overview of uh, what it's all about for anyone who's been, what do they say, living under a rock. <laughs> Well, FEIC 17 was kind of birthed with the idea of uh, Brian's wife. Uh, we were talking about uh, doing a premiere. We have, uh, for everyone that's familiar with uh, the movie I put out last year, Scientism Exposed, the plan was to do a trilogy on that. So to do Scientism Exposed, Scientism Exposed 2, and Scientism, Scientism Exposed 3. So when we started actually discussing that, Nicole, Brian's wife came up with a great idea about doing a premiere at a theater and making it into a really, really fun event. They've been super supportive from day one, uh, working with me on that project and just coming up with great ideas for media outreach or press releases and just different ways that we could impact the community. So one thing led to another and I started thinking like, wait, wait a minute, let's make this into a bigger event rather than just a movie premiere. Let's see if we can get a, you know, a bunch of people together. And one thing led to another and then all of a sudden we decided let's uh, let's put on a full-fledged uh, conference and let's uh, get the entire community uh, involved with this. We thought it was something that was really important uh, for a lot of people that were online within the community, uh, being able to meet, uh, you know, have an event that was once a year that everyone could get together. And um, based on the location, it made sense that either it was going to be in the freezing cold in Canada or it was going to be in North Carolina um, just because of our locale. So uh, Brian and his wife uh, wanted to host it for the first year. And just so everyone knows, uh, we're not guaranteeing that it will always stay in Raleigh, North Carolina. This is the first year. This is where it's at. And uh, we'll see what the future holds. But we're incredibly excited. Uh, we worked a lot of time, weeks in developing this, working with the venue and the, the conference. And uh, we're just incredibly excited. Launching the website and even the uh, app for Apple and Android. It's been, uh, it's been phenomenally um, a great, great uh, experience. And we're enjoying the journey. And Brian, I want to thank Nicole for doing all the PR work. Um, you guys in North Carolina uh, are taking the lead, especially Nicole, because PR is her thing. And I would say that that would be maybe the number one reason why it's there. Uh, yeah, we looked around a little bit. There were, there were multiple places. We, uh, we looked in Atlanta, um, and uh, really it just uh, – we came back down to – the place we found in Raleigh and uh, like Robbie said, doing it in Canada or here, but uh, yeah, she has a lot of connections here and we want to, uh, <clears throat> we definitely want to try to get public 
attention on it as much as possible to you know let the world know that we're very serious about this this isn't a joke and so that that was one of the another reason for so, saying let's just do it here we can reach out to all the her media contacts and uh really really uh, uh get this thing going kick off the first flat earth international conference if anybody wants to find out more, there are many ways you can find out more on YouTube, but in the description box of this video, there is a link to the website where you can read all about it, see who's going to be there, at least who's going to be presenting or on panels, and you can also register. So that's in the description box of this video. And I'm going to put it in the description box of every single video I do until we're right up on the uh, on the event. Now, uh, the VIP tickets, can you tell us what those were <laughs> and why they are were, not are anymore? Either Ravi or Brian, whoever wants to answer. Uh, the VIP tickets actually were uh, included in a way that have uh, a limited amount that uh, would be able to kind of have backstage access, be able to have basically all access um, at the conference to be able to get front row. And we've got some other surprises. But as well as the early bird with general admission, we do have quite a bit of surprises even for just the general admission. So we felt at the very beginning that we wanted to keep the prices as low as we possibly could go based on the obligation and contracts we signed. We basically had to uh, put it together in such a way to make sure that the first year we would definitely uh, keep the prices as low as we could go. Um, and I think that everyone, when they do uh, participate and uh, take in the experience, they're going to get their money's worth and then some. We're definitely planning on, on doing something very special um, in Raleigh uh, in November. And Mark, you were doing the Strange World show last night on TFR Truth Frequency Radio and during your show, maybe because of the show and you were Oh, yeah. It, we it, we the pushed VIP those last out. VIPs out the door. <laughs> <laughs> I said, look, there's only, because I was looking on the website, I was going, guys, there's only six left. And then all of a sudden, pe you know, my peanut gallery is kicking in. It's like, nope, four, one, it's over. <laughs> Holy smokes. That's awful. But I, 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 I'm so happy that, uh, you know, that, that it's getting that sort of because it hasn't even been a week has it since this thing's been announced no we announced it on uh, saturday uh, yeah. morning at 9 a.m uh, eastern yeah. standard time and so yeah it hasn't well, even been a week yet people were saying what does vip mean in fact um, uh, james pb who has uh, a couple channels flat earth addict and um also uh you may know him as uh flat earth uh, uh, Rainbow Taxi Chemtrails. Why did I get that confused? Uh, anyway, he was doing a hangout today and he was saying, what's the whole VIP thing about? We're all equal on the flat earth. Yeah, of course, we all believe that. But I, I think that the VIP aspect is just if you want to pay more to sit closer uh, and get involved in more things. It doesn't mean anybody's any less equal. It's um, it's your decision on where you want to sit and sometimes sitting closer to things cost more so i think that's what the vip yeah is. really it's just a name it's just a name it's not implying anything it's just this is a special optional ticket if you want to you know that experience and like i said we will definitely put together a a strong show for everyone and like i said everyone is equal uh there there'll just be different areas and uh, different things to uh, participate in so we're yeah. basically getting all this information uh to make sure that we have all the details uh for everyone that's going to be involved and like i said the level of excitement has been off the hook and i know that mm -hmm. some people like they see things and they're quite, they're, you know, they're skeptical, but I can just tell you, and I can assure you, you know, from Brian and I getting together really generally, we want to do this to something to really impact the, the community. We think this is important. And, you know, even with the price points, I mean, we looked around at first year conferences and there's prices as high as three, four or 500 for a two day event. I mean, we wanted to make sure that this was affordable for as many people to come as possible. And like I said, we are going to learn and we'll gather information and we want to do this, you know, year after year. And just make it better bigger every year so again if there was somebody that maybe wasn't asked to be a presenter that's not to say that you won't be asked or that there'll be room there's only so much room we have a one track type of scenario here we might expand into two different tracks and like i said we want to include as many people it's a really important part of our mission statement and even on the about us on the website states that we want to accept people from all different backgrounds and all different beliefs and that's really important to us yeah, I heard some people saying, oh, this is all about the Christians. There's so many people involved who are hardcore Christians, was the quote. And I know that you, Robbie, and you, Brian, are uh, identified as Christians in our community and talk ab about that uh, within your private life and and publicly, especially, Brian, more, more recently, definitely, with being baptized and everything that's happened in your life. Uh, just go to Brian's channel to learn more. Um, and uh, it, it, 
this is for anyone. This is not a Christian conference uh, or Christian convention. Uh, this is not going to be religion rammed down your throat. I mean, I've heard people say these sorts of things. Um, it's going to be a place where people are going to be good and kind to each other, have fun, mix and mingle, have that experience that, yes, we've all heard each other say all this stuff on YouTube before that we'll probably say there about Flat Earth and about being connected and about experiments. But this is where we can actually look each other in the eyes and have that feeling of community that is, I'm getting chills even thinking about it, that is so missing in most of our lives, unless you've got a partner who is connected on the same level you are to looking into the mysteries and secrets of our world and beyond. This is a chance to connect. This is a chance to be with people who think a lot like you. So uh, I, I would hope the people who are who are doubting it or being naysayers will, it's fine. They can do that if they want. Of course, it's their, it's their freedom to do so. But just, just realize that if you don't, you're not being forced to go. <laughs> so. and, and if you don't mind, I'd like to address this because I know this is a big question within the community and I have such great news about this. Um, at the beginning, Eric Dubay and Math, Math Powerland, Math Boylan were, were contacted. Now, Math Powerland basically said that uh, he, you know, he declined. He didn't want to be part of the event. Eric Dubay, for the longest time, uh, we didn't hear back. But uh, just a few days ago, I did hear back personally from Eric Dubay. And while he said that he was very extremely busy uh, this year, he said that I support 100% what you're doing. And uh, so it was really encouraging, even from Eric personally, to hear that he said, no, you know, I can't do it this year. Thank you so much for asking. Uh, but I'm totally supportive with what you're doing, which I was kind of surprised with. I know there's been a lot of infighting. And part of the reason we want to do this is to really help bring you know, people together, we all have our differences. We really do. I mean, as a, as a Christian, there's other people that are, are different. But the one thing that we all collectively agree on is that we have been lied to about the world we live in, that we live on. These things are really important. So we're coming together as there's such a bigger purpose. And I think even Eric is starting to see that, um, that, you know what, in this entire, you know, community, in this entire movement itself, um, it's important that we collectively come together and that we move into that next phase. So we think that something like this will really help. It will help people come, you know, that are, that are kind of scared. They really haven't maybe told people around them. They're going to get a lot of courage from this. I mean, when you're around people, there's always strength in numbers. And people People will be revived. They will be energized. It will. You will develop long-lasting friendships past even the internet or social media. And that's one thing that this community has had in space is social media interaction. I mean, even with the the bigger YouTubers and stuff, we dialogue on Skype and we talk on all of this technology. But we never ever meet. We never have this time. So I think it's going to be really important for the community to see this. And yes, there's no doubt we disagree on things. But if we focus on the areas where we agree, that's where we're going to do tremendous rides in moving this forward. So yeah, everyone, we're not making any quibs that yes, the organizers of this event, we are Christian organizers, but we are not ramming religion or Christianity down anyone's throat. As everyone will know, the Bible plays a big part. A big part of this community are Christians or do follow the Bible. So of course it's going to be in the lineup, but is, if anyone looks at the website, you will see that there's very few times. I mean, Rob Skiba obviously will be having that side, you know, in his, in his presentation. And other than that, myself and two others in a panel talking about Flat Earth and the Bible, you know, these are optional. You could take it in or not. But the rest of it, we've got Globebusters, we've got Mark Sargent talking about Flat Earth clues and different things like this. So we are bringing people together. So, I mean, if people say, well, those guys are Christian organizers, well, it's no different than someone organizing something, seeing so a purpose for a very big thing that can take place. So we're not, uh, you know, going to make sure that everyone is aware of that. Uh, and we're not planning to use this platform to proselyze or preach it. We are just going to do what we've done. And as you can see in the lineup, we're giving everyone equal opportunity. And over time, there's going to be more as one thing that a lot of questions are is, what if I can't make it? You know, we are going to be, you know, including streaming options. So for all you that just can't make it for whatever reason, or you're too far away, or you can't make it this year, maybe next year, you will have an opportunity to participate. We thought that was important that we could get everyone, you know, involved. So we're going to do those sort of things. I think it's fantastic. And I, I also am really proud to be involved in this to the degree that I am. Uh, Mark Sargent and I are going to do the Flatty Awards, which were supposed to have been uh, just a few days ago in February, but we pushed it back and uh, pushed it ahead almost in a way. Yeah. So it's going to be in November. And uh, so 
that'll be great. That'll be a fun thing to do. And there's yeah. all these things. There's going to be uh, the the movie premiere of your of your scientism exposed video part two. <laughs> it's and and more. It, for me, it's the most. Not only is it the most exciting thing of the year, it's the most exciting thing in the community to date. Mm -hmm. I am going to run a promo on my channel at least once a week. I'm going to mention it on every Strange World episode until this thing happens. And anyone that asks me, it's like, are you? That's going to be my, my opening question. It's like, are you going? Are you going? You know, now, that's what I did last night. I'm going to continue it until they get tired of me doing it. I don't want to take it away from an event that I don't know a lot about. So maybe I'm going to misspeak here, but there was a flat earth event in the Netherlands. Does anybody have any corrections? I think it was the Netherlands. And I don't want to say that, you know, that was nothing that was something. I don't know enough about it to talk about it. Um, but maybe it didn't have the. Uh, media attention that it needed that this one is getting and the media attention is being brought about in many cases by uh, Nicole who is uh, you know Brian's wife and also just doing the media organization and that doesn't mean that event was I, I can comment on it the organizer actually they're having one in 2017 and yep. he's been in contact with me so that we are going to work together and help kind of promote that because I think it's fantastic that yes. they're they're doing something for for Europe um, and again he has been in contact so we will be you know definitely we're supportive of people anyone that wants to put something together where it's a meetup or it's a conference or they want to do an Asian conference or whatever I mean we're all working on this together so again this is not like anything to do with competition or anything we're all about this about encouraging and helping one another. So I do know that there was something in 2016. I said, I don't know anything that happened within it. I know that there was a little um, stuff that uh, some announcements that were made. I never saw any follow through as far as anybody that uh, went there or that commented on or any videos. Um, but again, I do know that there was something in Europe that happened last year and there will be kind of a tour. Mark can talk a little bit more about it. I heard on the show yesterday, he was talking a little bit about it and they're yep. doing uh, quite a nice uh, thing. And I'll be in contact with him um, next week about uh, kind of working together and pushing that uh, for Europe. Also, there was the Oxford meetup, which uh, Nathan Oakley was one of the big organizers of that. And there were many great people. I got to go to that one. So that was fun. Um, so people who are from the US, me, went to the Oxford meetup in June of 2016. And I believe for this one, maybe not the first one, but perhaps, but definitely the second forward, there are going to be people from the UK and beyond who will take that trip and come to wherever it happens to be in the US uh, next time, or maybe even this time. I, I didn't tell anybody I was going to the one in Oxford in the UK. I just flew there and showed up because I thought and there's already fun. been people and there's already been people that have actually um booked their flights and booked uh, their hotels from Europe uh, I know personally they've contacted yeah. me and said everything's booked and I'm ready to come and they're coming from you know some very far distances so it definitely will be international there'll be people flying in from all over our uh, flat plane wonderful that's uh oh, so exciting oh uh, there's Earlier today, I was thinking about the things that are going to be happening this year in Flat Earth and in my personal life. And to me, that's just the biggest exciting thing. It's there, it's ahead. And even on the website, there's a countdown to it. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's kind of far away, but it's like every yeah. day you can see how close, how much closer we are. And from what Robbie was saying, the I, I can confirm what he was saying, which was just about everybody that's emailed me and commented and called so far about this, they're all chiming in with finally i get to spend time you know with my own i finally i get to spend time and and commiserate with everybody it's like okay this is this is actually happening yeah it's going to supercharge everything it is going to be a critical mass and i'm not overstating it it is going to be a massive critical mass of, of of an idea and i hope the media descends upon us both pro and con because what they want they're not going to get so, so many, I think, that are going to show up are going to think it's a circus sideshow. It's not. It's not going to be that. They're going to expect alien costumes and literally tinfoil hats and the whole nine yards, and they're going to get the exact opposite, and they're going to wait, what, what's happening here? Mm. I was and, talking with Carly Sunshine about it because she's coming as well and part of part of it. And uh, she said, we, we were both just sort of getting chills whilst talking. You know, we were messaging on Facebook, but we both felt this, you know, wow feeling. And she was saying, uh, I might cry. And I said, I, I know I'm going to cry. I mean, I'm not a really even a crier, but it's, we were joking saying waterproof mascara is a must. I know not for you guys. 
Maybe you, Mark, but. <laughs> oh, I'm going to try in my, in that luncheon keynote thing. I'm going to see if I can bring tears. I've got uh, plenty see, of time to work on it. I'm going to see if I can bring them. See if you can bring tears. That's a crazy way to put it. <laughs> uh, anyway, wonderful guys. Oh, I did want to ask you this and it's the thing about the money. There's been questions like, well, are you, are, are all of the presenters going to be paid? Are you flying them in? Are they going to be staying in lavish hotels with, with gold toilet seats? And are the, you paying them to do this? Are we making money off of this? So uh, my answer to all of that has been, I'm paying my own airfare my own hotel accommodations, my own food, and my own transportation from the airport. And, you know, I, I, that's it's an honor to be going to this, an honor to be asked to be involved in it. Um, I'm totally happy to be paying to go to this. Uh, but people, a few naysayers are thinking it's all about the money, honey. Brian, do, yeah, do you want to address that, Brian? Oh uh, yeah, no, that's, we definitely, uh, we all got together and talked about this and, and prayed about it beforehand and uh, really started looking at what it would cost to, to put one of these things together. And it's, it, it's, it's, a, it's a lot. I mean, you have to take a lot of risk. You have to sign contracts and, and acquire the space beforehand. And so, as Robbie said before, we tried to set the prices, as, the ticket prices as low as we could to just cover the cost and bring everybody together. And so if, you know, we're, we're just thinking about covering the cost right now. And of course, there, there, I'm sure there's things that we haven't thought of. You know, we thought of AV equipment and all, all the things we need to do to get this to get this done. We're trying to, to provide meals if we can. And uh, and so uh, if there's money left over, um, we're, I mean, our thought is to, re, you know, to reinvest it right back into the conference, make it better, provide more more for 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 everyone that comes you know, you know drinks whatever we can do to, to just make it better so that we can keep going with this and, and just have a great conference and then continue on down the road and, and keep going again and again uh every year so that's that's the real plan here and if anybody is doubting that then all they need to do is send a quick message to anybody who's speaking with you right now and they will fill you in on minor details on things uh, it is an expense unless you live right next door to get to that location. Hmm. But to me, well worth it if you're able to, just to, as you'd said, be with your own, something that you don't usually experience in your regular life and have that moment of bonding and connectedness. And uh, take that with you when you leave and then tackle your, your YouTube videos or the way you speak with others and the way you talk about it with others. Uh, if you do, uh, in a different way, in a way in which you now feel empowered and now you don't feel like, well, I'm kind of a freak because you're not. There's many others and we're all normal people. A quick question for uh, Robbie or Brian, as if this thing starts hitting capacity, will the hotel that's hosting it be able to handle all of them or will there be overflow to nearby hotels? I mean, for the first year, we decided that we we kept it to a certain amount. I mean, obviously, we want to be able to put on an incredibly good conference for those two days. And like I said, in the future, we'll be able to accommodate and expand and grow bigger. But again, we have a plan that we, with the venue, we can work to a certain limit, but we are going to be limited this year. So again, if it does completely sell out, it does this year. Like I said, we're going to be providing um, online streaming. We think it's pretty generous for a first year conference, but like I said, uh, we will have online streaming options. And if it does happen, again, it is a good amount of people uh, when it gets to that level. But like I said, we want to make sure that we were working in kind of like phase one, phase two, phase three. And we had to work yeah. with a venue that, okay, we're committing to having you know so many rooms sold so much you know you got to basically you're on the hook if it doesn't sell i mean somebody has to pay the money there is no refunds for us as far as the hotel or venue it is basically in the contract that's the policy so what i'm saying is we basically are taking upon that risk we don't know how it's going to go so we want to make sure that we started off small did a really good job but we have that room to expand so it could sell it the first year um we will see but like i said we can definitely look forward to you know feic 18 and feic 19 again we are just going to continue and like i said lo locations a lot 
lot of people are like, why Raleigh? Again, the first year, it's important. Like I said, with the connections that uh, Brian and his wife have, being able to see the venue, it just made a lot of sense, you know, because it's the first year for us. And I have a bit of event planning background and marketing, and there is, you know, some knowledge here. But again, we're doing this as a first year. We want to make sure that we do something really well instead of having like a 5,000, you know, attendance, you know, is too large at the beginning. We want to maybe grow to that, you know. I mean, it'd be wonderful if in like five years we're filling out an entire stadium. I mean, how amazing would that be? But sure. again, we're we're talking small at the beginning. Again, it's very generous enough that we can kind of continue and grow. Um, and we're just looking forward to putting on an amazing time. We want people to leave there and thinking it was one of the best experiences of 2017 in so many different ways, whether it was community building, whether it was helping them just to get bold again or, or secure in, in kind of what they stand on, is hearing different points of view that we can kind of come together. But the biggest thing is that people can meet face to face and that for once and for all, even d different belief people can come together and go, you know what? We all differ on these things, but collectively, when we come together on this, we start making some major stride. We start making some noise. And like I said, you, you mentioned it, and we're all for bad or good press. It's still press. And for 100 people that laugh at us, there'll be that one person that says, wait a minute, that's that presentation got me thinking. I'm going to go on Google and start looking into that. And it's all about one person at a time. And this, we feel, is important to kind of continue on to move to that next phase. And we really believe, you know, wholeheartedly that this is going to have a major impact and it will change. It's history in the making. It truly is. And we're just so excited uh, to be called to do this. And I want to say a huge thanks to everyone that, you know, we reached out to as far as being presenters and these. the support was you know, overwhelming. Uh, at the beginning, we were like, oh, you know, what if they say no? And what if nobody comes? <laughs> you know, but again, every single person in the community has been so incredibly positive and supportive. And again, there's other people on the list that we are looking to include next year. There was only so much room this year. So it's not if you, ha you haven't been called or, you, you know, reach out to us. We definitely want to include you. We want to try to, you know, if you're doing something in the community, it's not like we're playing favorites here. We're putting things together. It's the first year. We are just going to continue to grow. So please give us your ideas, work with us. We want to make this into an amazing thing and everyone's involved. We're not, we're not going to say no to anyone. I mean, Eric Dubay, Matt Boylan, you know, this is for you as well. You want to come. It's an amazing opportunity. You deserve to be there. You know, you guys are pivotal in the entire thing that we're saying right now. It was a lot of your research. And I mean, yes, we differ on models and we differ on religion. And, but when it comes down to it, you know, this is an opportunity. And and honestly, for me personally, I would love to see at whatever FEIC 18, 19, whenever you can make it, there'll be a spot for you. Any one of you, you know, that, uh, you know, have made a huge impact on this community. And that's part of our about us and our mission statement is, you know, anybody that's making a major impact in this community, talk to us, you know, because again, we're not discriminating anyone and we're definitely wanting to make this um, just the most amazing uh, thing that can happen for this community. And hopefully it will impact, like you said, you know, Europe's doing their thing and then maybe somebody else will do it. And it will just spark all sorts of, you know, that next phase where we all start to come together <laughs> instead of all this infighting. And a lot of the infighting has, been going on which discourages a lot of people from even looking into this subject so when all of a sudden you know i can go on the record and i can say i have the proof you know eric dubay said i i am supportive with what you guys are doing I'm sorry i'm so busy this year i can't make it that's not to say he won't make it next year and it'll be awesome to see you know eric to be gave a really strong presentation destroying the globe up on stage you know because that's what we all do best we're not focusing on other areas where we differ on we're focusing on our core expertise or what we bring to the table and that's what's going to make this thing so amazing and like i said the friendships and just the experience get ready for it it's history in the making and we're we're so incredibly excited for every one of you that are coming are going to be part of it and yeah. also, when we go to this event, you may meet people who may have vocally disagreed with the way you approach your channel or something about you they don't like. But when you meet in the flesh, I think that all of that stuff will fall away and you'll realize he or she is just a person like you. And if they have taken the time to be at that event, they are serious about what they're talking about. And they are here for one reason, which is which is unity and friendship and community and communication. And I think it will mend a lot of fences. And I think people who don't get to go who watch that happening on the videos that will come from this event will say, wow, wow, and be really blown away by the fact that people are willing to lay down their, their arms they've taken up against others and just sort of uh, pretty much embrace and say, hey, we don't always agree, but you know, I love you, man. And that might sound cheesy, but that's 
I know that's what's going to happen. And there's so many people in this that are so alone. I mean, I'm getting emails already of like people almost in tears and they are thanking profusely saying, thank you so much. This is an opportunity. I'm now going to be able just to meet some people or I'm going to be able to talk. And there's so many people we, f we sometimes forget that there is a lot of people out there that aren't vocal or making a YouTube channel or doing a blog. They're very, you know, they, they're scared to death to come out on this or they've come out on it and they've received such a backlash that they just shut up about it. You know, so for them, this is such an important thing. And to have that opportunity for people, you know, it, it's just a wonderful thing. And I think it's going to help a lot of people. And we're going to move, like I said, into that next phase. And again, we want to make sure that it is inclusive in the sense that everyone, let's come together. And again, the outside world is watching. It is open to the press and open to the media. This was one thing we discussed early on that we wanted to make sure that the presentations that anyone's giving, remember that the media is watching or the world's listening, you know? So again, when they see these argumentations, when they see the proof, when they see like, you know, Mark talking about, you know, artillery experts and Navy and, you know, different people that have come, whoa, like I didn't know there were these professions. You know, you got Brian Mullen, you know, you know, getting into structural engineering, you know, whoa, you know, that guy's not just a tinfoil hat kind of, he's got a, he's got degrees, you know, in, in engineering. So when people find out that there's different people of different backgrounds, belief systems, professions, pilots coming forward, they can't dismiss this. I mean, they can they can only laugh at it so long. Now they're going to have to try another tactic. But with their tactics, uh, just like you're seeing with the media, it always backfires because people start researching because they have the internet. And the internet is our greatest tool where they can type in, you know, flat earth. Hmm. What is this flat earth or moon landing? You know, you crack, you start cracking that moon landing or whatever, whatever piques your interest. All of a sudden you've got a lot of people and there's people coming out every day looking into this, maybe laughed at it. And most of us laughed at it at first. That's the funny thing. So we're going to expect people are going to laugh at us. The media is going to make fun of us. We made fun of it when we first saw it too. I mean, I did personally, and I know a lot of people when they first heard about it, they laughed this off. So again, we come with the knowledge that yes, we are going to get a lot of ridicule and there's, but there is going to be a lot of press. And again, and they can't dismiss it when all of a sudden there's an international conference forming and people are coming together and going, well, this is now getting serious. This is not just some internet, you know, social media thing on the internet. This is now moving to real life and real life creates a whole other experience. And we're, you know, incredibly excited to, you know, continue on with this journey. So. Yeah. It's going to be a wonderful event. Information on the uh, the website is in the description box of this video, so you can go there, you can poke around. It is a really well done website, so congratulations for putting that together. And then there are apps that work on uh, your iPhone, or um, they work on whatever you've got. And they, I have an iPhone, so it works so smoothly and so easily. It's it's designed brilliantly, and you'll be able to find out about all of that once you go to the website. So I encourage you to check it out. And and instead of maybe being a naysayer, uh, give a, give the idea a chance and give the people who are psyched for this event to happen the, the chance to have that great feeling in their hearts. It's not going to hurt you any. And maybe you'll come around and maybe I'll see you there and that'll be great. And uh, thank you both, Robbie and Brian, for coming here. And I put links to your channel as well in the description box of this video. I do appreciate you taking the time out to do it. And The secret's out now. I think uh, you've been on every channel so far talking about it. And, we, will, we won't be stopping anytime soon talking about this. So thanks a lot, guys. Thanks for having us. Thanks, Patricia. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, guys. See you later. Brian Mullen and Ravi D, just two real gentlemen. And uh, really, really great that they're involved in this. Yeah. Now, I hope that by having this on today during the Secret Show, we've... Uh, We've at least answered some questions that people have had. What do you think, Mark? Do you think? Yeah, like one, it's not, I'm not putting on the conference for one. <laughs> yeah. And, and I'm not I, having I'm going to call people. him out by name here. Star Gods makes the video. <laughs> and he's been, well, Mark's doing a conference in Pennsylvania or something. like, did you even look at the trailer? No. Star Gods has very poor research skills. Oh, killing me. Like, of... oh, it wasn't even me. In fact, you and I, <laughs> we didn't even know it was coming. All of a sudden, it was like a call from Robbie. Hey, mm -hmm. do you want a conference? Like you to speak at it. You want to come? It's like, are you mm -hmm. kidding? A, a, yeah, I'm there. Give me a, a line of astrophysicists <laughs> with rifles couldn't stop me from getting in there. So, oh no, super super psyched. But let's let's talk briefly about the people that that aren't 
you know, that are kind of on the fence right now. Mm. One, of course, is is Eric. So happy to hear that he's supporting it. How amazing is that? Now, I noticed yeah. Eric might be softening a bit, dare I say. Softening don't, 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 no, don't do that. Don't I tried that, that once. I, no, and when, when he and I were about to mend a bridge and all of a sudden his supporter says, don't talk to Mark. He's a horrible person. And then Eric just well, shut me down. He did support Dell of Beyond the Imaginary Curve, who's mm -hmm. gone out and done these on the street interviews. And he supported him, not just, you know, hearsay. He actually put up one of Dell's videos on it's his channel. It's right in front of me. Flat Earth Street Interviews yeah. by Eric Dubé, uh, Dell from, from Scotland. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> I didn't realize until I, you know, because I used to listen to him at some of his stuff, but then I started watching him. I understand more the captive audience that he's got because Dell's a big guy. He's got a lot of charisma. Well, then he looks like he's made out of bricks. I mean, <laughs> so oh, sometimes if, if, his kids come in and uh, they come into the room where he's, uh, you know, doing the doing the live Google Hangout. And he's so like just in passing, you can see his interaction with them. You could just see that he's like a, a, a real lovable guy. Even oh, I'm sure. I'm evil. sure he is. But on the street, you know, I, I'm sure the average person like, yeah, I'm going to give him a couple minutes because I have no idea what he wants. And you know, <laughs> he's intimidating enough that I think I should listen. And so he's like, it's perfect. They yeah. could walk up and talk to him. It's like, oh, please don't kill me. You know, type oh, of guy. No. I know I'm sure he's not that guy. No, he's got a lot of charisma and he has a lot of uh, something in him that gives him that confidence to be able to speak the way he does. And he's not a guy who believes every little thing that comes across, you know, his desk, so to speak, in Flat Earth. Yeah. Uh, he's uh, really looking into things and really wants to prove things. And he also wants to, you know, let the public out there just, you know, doing their daily stuff, walking around, shopping, know that there's some questions about the world we live in that people are starting to ask. Yeah. And that's what he's been doing. So uh, along with doing his regular uh, hangout show. So check out Beyond the Imaginary Curve. I um, was I was, I was thrilled that Eric was, was supporting him. And uh, look, you, you and I both know that if Eric shows up at this thing, even if he's not a presenter or anything like that, no, there's going to be no hatred in the room. It really be like, oh, glad you showed up. I, it, I hope he'll do um, uh, what's it called? Show potatoes three live right there for us to see. <laughs> you know, you know what though? If that would be interesting, yeah, it wouldn't wouldn't be terrible. No, because good production value. But at the very <laughs> at the very least, if he doesn't show up, and I know coming from Thailand, that's kind of a big deal, right? But I mean, it's November; it's a ways down the road, so mm -hmm. it's not like he couldn't figure out some way to get there. But if he doesn't. You've seen this before in, in in mainstream things. You know, send make a exclusive video presentation just for the conference. Wouldn't take much to do. You know, a 10, 15 minute piece. Him talking to the conference, nobody else sees it, and then he puts oh, it up on YouTube right afterwards. That's cool. Or I, sometimes I've seen conferences where they have they uh, they have a stage, and then there's a they play videos, and it's a video message from. You know, like in award shows, they'll have yeah. somebody accepting, yeah. but it's a video. It would be cool if Eric made something that would be played during it. Yeah. Now, some will say, Patricia, Mark, why are you praising Eric? Eric's the one who talks about, you know, kill all Jews and all of that. Yeah, I'm aware of Eric's beliefs. I'm aware of his beliefs about that. I'm aware of his beliefs about me and Mark and many other people. Um, and I'm not saying that those things are good. No, because I'd be lying to you and myself. I am saying that he's influenced many, many people who are in this community. And because of that, um, he he's a flat earther. So, yeah. you know. How, how many people have I said or have written in the comments or how many emails have I gotten? They said, oh, yeah, first saw Eric DeBay's video. Then I finally got around to your stuff. I've, I've gotten email after email. They've started with Eric's vids. And so, look, am I blowing smoke on him? No, no, I, I'm not. At the same time, though, he is good for the community in most of his aspects. He's done right. a lot of work, a ton of work. And he's, mm -hmm. he's, he's the leading, not by a huge amount, but he's the leading subscriber base. Yeah. Right now that's and out there. I can't tell Eric what to do. I can't tell him how to think about Jews or how to think about me. Nobody can tell Eric what to do. Nobody can tell any of us what yeah. to do, but, um, it, 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 it would be, it would be, uh, uh, it'd be a fence let, mander. 
It would be Le- great. Exactly. Let me end it at this and then we'll move on to a different guy, which is given the critical mass that's going to be hit there, not just in the community, but in the opportunities from media, <laughs> the media exposure alone, you it would be he would miss out on a yes. lot of mm-hmm. potential things right. by, there, by not showing. And if there are news teams there or people writing stories, yeah. for newspapers or blogs to have Eric uh, speaking, uh, you know, on his flat earth proofs and his beliefs. Sure. It, it, it's just going to be a, a well-spoken person there who knows what he's talking about. And that's what we need. And if yeah. it's flat earth related and that's where he goes with what he does, I'm, I'm all behind him. Definitely. Now, do I believe everything Eric says about flat earth? No. Do I believe everything you say about flat earth? No. Do I believe everything every, anybody says? No, we all take uh, little pieces from people's videos that we see and put yeah. together in our own mind, what we think the world might be like, but we do all have some, basic tenets about this flat earth or this plane or, you know, that we, Ab- we agree on. Absolutely. As I have been fond of saying, it, when it comes to the flat earth army, everybody's on the same side of the field, but there are different banners being held depending on where you are. But thing is, everybody's still on that side of the field. Globe is on the other side. Mm-hmm. So when you're looking down, it's like, oh yeah, you may not f- believe in this banner, or you may not follow this banner, but you're going to be following a banner, you know, a certain ideal, a certain theory. The whole point is, on the other end, that's you know, your enemies on the other side, and of course, there's going to be squabbles. But the other guy I wanted to mention real quick, as you know, mm-hmm. and he just released a video just before the show started, is our good friend Matt Boylan, otherwise known as Math Powerland, otherwise known as the NASA Channel. He is still, again, it's only not even a week. And so he's still, oh, cat sighting, cat Where? sighting. Oh, oh, that's the, glory. <clears throat> the uh, CGI or not, C- you CGI decide. cat in front of the jukebox. The, the blue in the jukebox is screwing up everything in his ears. The um, Matt, Matt, he, he's, what, what's the word I'm looking for here? He is very proud of saying. <laughs> He's very proud of saying that he is, quote unquote, the originator of the whole thing, that he was doing it long before anyone. And you know me, my very first clue, you know, that the introduction to the clues, I gave him credit with a, you know, mentioned him by name, put a slide out there for him. And I mentioned him in a whole bunch of interviews saying, because people say, how'd you get into Flat Earth? And I tried to, well, I watched several videos. One of them was Matt Boylan's. And he just, I don't, I don't know what he wants. That's, you know, without us getting into too much here, I literally don't know what he wants. That's, you know, he keeps saying, oh, no, I don't want to be part of this group. And it's okay, fine. Tell us what you want. Do you want to be crowned king of of flat earth dumb and you want a big spotlight and, you know, you want to wave your scepter at people? I don't know what he wants Hmm. at this point. So will he come to the convention? I don't know. At this point, it'd be nice if he if he did. Well, he's welcome, of course. Yes, of course you know? he's welcome. I, I just wish he'd, you know, retain. I'm not trying to be mean. I just wish he'd retain focus, get his message out there, whatever that is. And, the enemy and he, is not fellow flat earthers. No, no, it's not. It never has been. And and I don't know if, why would he, he would attack me. I have given I have given him more hits just by mentioning his name. And I still mention his name. Look, his first video that you know which one I'm talking about, the one where he's sitting down on the couch with his girlfriend's interviewing him. Yes. Sober, coherent, is brilliant. It is It is a, is the one of the great spine-tingling stories you, you'll ever hear in, in the world of fiction or fact. It is, a, it is a great little story, and I still love telling it. So I hope he makes it. If he doesn't, that's fine. Again, missed opportunity if he doesn't. And, you know, people would be great. He, if, if he wants to love, you know, guys, like, if he wants to love, show up. Yes. That's the thing. If there are people who believe they were in it long before fill in the blank, and they're the tr- only true flat earther and everyone else is an agent uh, yeah. or whatever, whatever your belief system is, you show up and you, you talk to the people who are on your same side because we're all – flat earthers or people who are questioning the globe because some people don't want to call themselves flat earthers. Um, and, and groups will form within the group that's there at the event. So 
but not showing up, you're taking your voice off the table. So right. foolish. Yeah, actually. even if, heck, I, I, I hate to say this, but let's invite, you know, the the people that'll come out against, you know, not, but you're still going to have to behave yourselves. I, you and I will talk a little bit. Of, well, you know what? Should we even talk about offline or should we bring it up? Let's bring it up. Let's bring it up, baby. <laughs> Uh, okay. So, will there be security to protect us from Lord Stephen Christ? Is that what there you go? I mean, <laughs> I heard I heard a rumor that he actually. And I cannot confirm this. Somebody have to look this up. I heard a rumor he actually attended the Netherlands one, mm. mm -hmm. and last year. And you know full well if he went to, to attend. I mean, he's got bones to pick with <laughs> with our community, so he would he would want to show up. But look, behave yourself. And he again, even up. if he showed up. I'd be like, look, I don't hate you because you still don't believe in the globe. Fine, exactly. concave versus convex. Big deal, right? You have your beliefs, we have ours, but we still don't like the globe. We still have a globe burning party together. Mm -hmm. So exactly. don't, don't, just, just behave, you know, yeah. don't. And I was don't. only joking about having security to protect us from LSC. Um, just teasing. Well, I, 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 it, no, we, we don't, we don't want to throw anybody out. Look, there's going to, the, 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 the speaking things are going to be very civil. They're going to be very professional. We don't need trolls. If a troll shows up and just starts wreaking havoc, yeah, they're going to be tossed. But see a troll, if a troll shows up, they've paid the money to go there. So that's their loss when they get tossed after yeah. yelling yeah, out. Well, it's the know, same thing with presenters. Pre if a presenter gets out of line, the, you know, Ooh. you read the fine print. You know, if 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 I went off on a freaking tirade and just started losing it, they would they would ask me to leave. I, I'm treated no differently than anybody else. Will there be a hotel video after? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, no. Although it's funny you mentioned that because I'm sure there's going to be wonderful. That's another great reason to go. Is everybody's going to be recording everything? Yeah. And so many cell phones are going to be out. You're going to have people taking videos of, of anybody like, you know, again, don't want to bait Matt here, but if Matt, Matt walking from the parking lot to the conf, to a conference room is going to be photographed the entire way. Yeah. He's like a flat earth rock star. You it's know, freaking you know, Matt Boylan. I know. know. I'd be there like, eh. well, maybe not. <laughs> No. So, yeah. What, 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 is, what does he do if somebody says, "Oh, can I get a selfie with you?" What does he do in that case? Does he say, "No, no, no autographs"? No. no. All of you are shills or Jews. Oh yeah. <laughs> or is he? Or is he like actually carry? I shouldn't pick, but no, but I keep not. having these visuals in my head. Like you actually have a bottle in his hand as he's walking into the hotel. You know what? It's all silly because I know he's on the same side as we are. He is. We're against the globe. You don't have to agree. Just, you know, other people I want to see there, people I, I personally want to meet is one. I want to meet I was, you. Oh, wait, we already met. <laughs> right, right. Did we? No, we did. Did we? Or are but, they just making that up? The, uh, no, no, we, uh, <laughs> people I want to meet because I was supposed to, like, I was supposed to do a, uh, a radio thing with Dave Murphy. And I'd lo I'd love I'd love for him to show up. I, I haven't heard anything about him yet. Uh, did something I did something with Zen Garcia. I'd love to I'd love to meet him because yes, he's been so have I recently. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he's been cranking out stuff recently. Yeah, uh, there's on the so book. many good people that I I can't wait to see and hug and just like oh, you're yeah. real, you know. Just yeah, and I, I've already getting. You probably heard on the show. I'm already getting people that are within driving distance. They're going to drive their cars with the flat Earth license plates down there. Oh wow! I'm flying. I'm not driving. Yeah, I am. well, I know I'm but, not driving. <laughs> not yeah, from well, for you. Not for from sure. the Northwest. That'd be horrible. But Mark from New York, one of my regulars, he's one of the first ones. He's oh yeah, I'm totally driving the 300 down there with it wow. is flat. Wow, that's cool. That'll be fantastic. And who knows how many people will have new plates by the time this thing happens. It's going to be wonderful. So check out Mark's channel because he puts together compilations of all the different flat earth license plates that are, have been coming out and yep, I'm doing one a month. together. So one a month on those. And I'm yeah. And then for the conference, I'm going to do a new music, music video. It's not me doing a narrative. It's just, just music video with the details and who's going to be presenting. And so I'm trying to try to update it as soon as I get new info, mm -hmm. but I'm going to do one of those every Saturday. And of course, strange world, my spaceship is literally going to be parked 
over North Carolina. It is not moving into the conference. Indefinitely. In, yeah. um, in chat, Teresa Gordon says she's flying and she lives very close to where I do. We're both living in Texas. She lives in Galveston. Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, Sally O2 says, I hope Dave Murphy is going. Oh, yeah, so do I. So do I. Uh, Martin Leakey is in our chat. Plasma John Doe as well. Um, let's see who else. Big L uh, is in there. Uh, let's see. Randolph Kane is saying, where and when is this? Randolph, look in the description box of this video and you will see FEIC17, a link. Go there and you'll find out everything. But briefly, it's uh, Friday and Saturday, November 9th and 10th, and it's in Raleigh, North Carolina. Flat Earth uh, International uh, Conference. You know, there's there's one guy I don't want to see there. I just realized that as I was going through the videos. Wait a minute. You know, you, you know who it is? Oh, no. It's Mark Ooh. Dice. Oh, what's Mark Dice done? Uh, I, nothing. He just The other things he's done. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, he's turned into now a just a, a straight up right wing, let's bash liberals type of guy. Really, that's all he really does now. I just don't like him. But he did a, he did a flat Earth video. He did an anti flat Earth video last right. year, and now he's yeah. I, so if he showed up, I I think I'd be like, eh, I don't want to get anywhere near him. Well, sometimes you can make enemies when you excuse me. Sometimes you can make friends when you meet people face to face, and they. But like, but Alex Jones could walk into the place; it wouldn't be hostile. The well, only Bill, guy yeah. that would actually probably be in some mortal danger would be NDT. He's not going to go to that. No, he wouldn't. But if he showed up, I mean, you right. could you could probably it would be a palpable. No, he would just be the, booed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Would people be would be walking by, be like, S -s -s -s. people, exactly. <laughs> everyone just be hissing at him. Uh, Persian scribe is in our chats. Uh, Greg T says that Joe Biggs from Infowars is a flat earther. I did not know that. I did not um, know that either. Somebody is saying Alex Jones is shill. Uh, uh, Awakened Mind says Mark Dice has 880,000 YouTube. I know, I know. That's what's one of the reasons I hate him even more. He remember he used. To, he, <laughs> Wait a minute. Well, no. no, because he doesn't deserve them. He it's right. just it's just Republican fodder. It's that's all he's he's just uh, it's it's he's just baiting Republicans. That's all he's doing. But remember, he started out his career. A lot of people, if you if you're a good Mark Dice basher, no, he started out his career as literally a personal wingman. For what? Picking he, up chicks like that? Picking up chicks. He would go to bars with guys, pick up so, you know, pick up two girls and give you one of them. That's the man you need to trust for your information. Exactly. Yeah, you know, like that Will Smith movie. That's that's what he was kind of like, your personal wingman. Wow. Professionally, he did that. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, we've got my love cocktail there. <clears throat> Excuse me. And he's going with his uh, German Shepherd Shanti. So that's pretty cool. Um, what do we have? Uh, Emily Suzanne is in our chats and, uh, we've also got, um, Ben matrix decode and what else? Jim truth TV says, do you all realize that Republicans and Democrats are on the same team? Now I agree with that. Definitely JM truth TV. Um, we've got uh, Bob from Globuster saying, Patricia, tell everyone how Cammy and I found out about the conference. Oh, okay. Uh, Oh, I might not know the story completely correctly. So oh, that's you, a great. Oh, wait, what, you tell it? Uh, well, Cammy was browsing the internet, and <laughs> well, you, you you finish, Mark. Cammy was browsing the internet, and she finds the website, which wasn't officially published yet. And I don't right. know how she got into it, but she got into it. She's so, a researcher, so I mean, she literally is always looking. Online. Apparently, so so Bob, get, and and this was short. This was a few days after Robbie called me. And he goes, hey, keep it under your hat. I haven't called everybody yet. And so Bob all of a sudden shoots me a message. He goes, he goes, man, some of these trolls. He goes, they're just, they're, they put a lot of time and effort. He goes, look at this website. I mean, they, talk about commitment. And I read it. It's going, yeah, dude, that's totally real. <laughs> that's totally legit. And he goes, what? <laughs> go, and even funnier, Cammy's there before she tells Bob about it, looking and thinking, my husband, who we share everything, and we're both flat earthers, hasn't told me about him speaking at this. Right, place. right. What's goes, going on here? Red flag. And Bob goes, "Oh, that would explain why I was a speaker at that." I go, <laughs> I go "Yeah, man." I go, "They, I go, they just haven't called everybody yet. They're still running down the list." 
Right. It's going, oh. And so, yeah, then I had to shoot you. And it's like, somebody tell Robbie the site's up or you know, the site's accessible. You got to shut that thing down. Fine. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, but again, it, it was great that literally, I don't think, with the exception of Eric and Matt, you know, it's still early, nobody said no. Right. Everybody say no. Why? Yeah, why? You couldn't, you could not drag you know what me I said, I said yes with like 50 exclamation points. <laughs> yeah, hell to the yes. That's me exactly. being all street. Um, Jibby Jedi uh, is uh, in our chat. Hey, Jibby. Um, da, da, da. Andres is here. And also the YouTuber in it, not of it, says hello to you and I, Mark. Um, Turquoise Dragon, hello. And Steven Meissner, flat out lies, says, love you guys. Shrumanati is in there doing his Shroomy sort of, if you've been in a live chat, you'll know Shroom because he says things that have a lot of ease in them and exclamation points. So Carly Sunshine is here and oh, St. Trinian's is here and uh, from Manchester, England. Recently I was there. So uh, Wesley Stays Flat Earth News is in our chats. And Flat Earth says, News. Yes, he says he loves my guitar in the background. So, uh, Perrin Greenway, bling bling, as well, is in the chat. And Five Ar Arts Liberalis says 190 viewers. Oh, it's actually 196 viewers, which is pretty good, actually. Swamp Lover is in our chat. Uh, Spec Tickles um, is here, and Spec Tickles is interviewing you. Yes. Isn't uh, that cool? For day after tomorrow? Yes. Yeah, he's got a promo on his channel that's Spec, S P E C K, and then Tickles. I'm, and P I C K L E S. I'm actually going to be reading for the first time ever. I'm feeding the trolls a little bit. I'm going to be reading mean tweets. <gasps> Ooh. I know. Huh? Can't, yeah, can't wait. Yeah. <laughs> they're not going to be as bad as some of the celeb mean tweets, I'm sure. Right. But you know what? I, I don't really get that many mean emails or messages or the, nothing that anybody writes to me which can be connected to them where I could actually respond. I don't get that sort of thing. I hardly get any mean comments. I get ball earth trolley comments on my uh, on my uh, videos. Yeah. I do get people making videos about me that are humorous. I just am scrolling and I'm, I see one by somebody and I'm like, oh yeah, good. I hope you get a lot of hits on that. Yeah. Um, but no, 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 not very many mean mean tweets, so to speak. So that'll be fun for you. Somebody, somebody should, if Robbie's listening, or somebody should email Robbie real quick. I just thought of a, a, another presenter. I <laughs> just completely escaped me. Darren Nesbitt. Yeah, Darren Nesbitt would be really, really good. <sighs> Man, if he could come over. I mean, yeah, he might get roped into the European thing, but I think he'd be excellent. Dave Murphy would also be a great presenter. I know there's some slots. Uh, Dorje, Dorje, I got it right this time. Dorje. Dorje is, is, is there. Uh, Shane Corning says he can feel the spin. No, you can't. <laughs> uh, what else? What else? So many people and um, Pale Queens. That's a really cool YouTube name, Pale Queens. I'm not sure what it is in regard to, but I think of beautiful, pale women who are queens. So therefore the name. I don't know. Um, what else? What else? What else? Um, uh, oh, Ginger Sugarbush just uh, said hello. And oh yeah, that's that's one of the people that writes me on a regular basis. Ginger Sugarbush is cool. That's a cool guy who has um, ginger hair, red hair like me, and also likes cats. So terrible guy name for a YouTube channel. I'm sorry, it is. Well, you don't forget it. That's what makes it a good. Well, name. no, but. Did I tell you there was a girl in my high school? Her her real name was Charity Bush. It's rough. Wow. Yeah. Giving it away for free, hey? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Can you imagine being her? Oh. No. 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 That would be hard. And I mean, why would her parents do that to her? They weren't thinking, obviously. Yeah. Did I tell you, though? I, I think I told you a little, little quick uh, side thing that's not flat earth. So Wait there was a only a hundred. You don't ever. We don't ever do that. We don't ever talk about things that aren't flat earth on the show. I but. digress. I, or as they with some interviewer said it, you just go off into the weeds sometimes. You go yeah. off road. Oh, yeah. It's so far that you forget how to back, get back on the road. Yep. Which is, it, there's only 120 people in my graduating high school class. But in it, what are the odds here, right? Mark Sargent, 
a Lisa Colonel, and a Pam Major. Three military ranks in one one high school class. And of course, I was the lowest rank. There were two officers and an enlisted man, which was me. How weird is that, right? That is weird. I know. Um, I'm going to ask Martin in chat. Um... There's an event that you and uh, Nathan and others are going to be doing at a space museum or not a, a space center. Martin, put in chat when that is. I should know that. Tex Wait, Wendelson who's be is in that? Uh, Nathan Oakley, Martin Leadkey, and others. So they're doing an event. So I'm going to ask him to tell me the exact date of that. I should know. I just can't recall it right now. Um, people are talking about cake in the chat. German chocolate is what uh, Cami is saying. And it's a thing. Started with the Globebusters chat, randomly talking about cake in the chat. For no reason, nobody will ever really remember what started it, but... Cake? Cake, yeah. Mm. In a chat, people are talking about all sorts of things involving flat earth or consciousness or this or that, and all of a sudden somebody will just say, German chocolate cake, and then everyone starts talking about cake, so... <laughs> I don't know. Huh. Uh, Zoe of Be Here and Love is here. Cammy's putting up pictures of cake. And um, anyway, and uh, Zoe is making coffee. So it's cake and coffee going on during the secret show. Now, what are you looking up? I can see the intent look. of. Oh, you. I'm sorry. Well, as you know, I go into when whenever we do a show, I go into YouTube, I type in flat earth and I set the filter to one week. Oh, I don't see like what's... looking at one week because I look at it so frequently. It's like, saw that, saw that, saw that, saw that. <laughs> But every once in a while, I, I, I'll change the filter. It's like, okay, what was, what was the breakdown of what happened over the week? Mm -hmm. And, the, you know, of course, the things that caught my eye, what I mentioned, you know, Matt. I will say, Matt, Matt has a knack for showmanship. Literally all caps, YouTube war on flat earth. When his video has really nothing to, really to do with a YouTube war. But it's a great title. Well, he had that other one that said, a list of all the paid chills and agents in flat earth. And there was like <sighs> no list. Yeah, that that yeah, it's, that's taken straight garbage. from the tabloids. <laughs> You've seen this in tabloids; they do it every month. Who in Hollywood is gay? Yes, <laughs> right? exactly. We'll tell you. <laughs> right, plastic surgery on all the, your favorite celebrities. Details revealed, and then you go in, and there's just like one person with a broken arm in a cast, and whatever. Right. That's all. Hey, hey, well, since we're we're being candid here, is flat Earth addict? Is he? Is he a good guy? I think that's Flat Earth Taxi Rainbow Chemtrails. Oh, then he is a good guy. Yeah. He wait, did a 35... Let me make sure if that's true. Is that well, true? Well, he did a 35-minute video. I haven't watched it yet because it's it's barely... What's the title? Hours. A list a of review, all page shills and trolls? <laughs> no. Well, it's Review of the Flat Earth International Conference. Oh, yes. Yeah, that's James P.B., uh, Mr. Flat Taxi Rainbow Chemtrails. He has other channels. And I believe that's what I was talking about earlier, uh, if that's who it is. All right. Well, that's that's probably good then. Yeah, and what he was saying is, what's the whole thing with the VIP? Like, oh, that's where it came from. Yeah. So. Yeah, and VIP. Look, that's it's no different, by the way, than than sports stadiums. Look, you you want to be on the third base line, you got to be right. You want to get hit with a foul ball, you got to pay to to be there. It's not it's not a good or bad thing. It's just preference. Uh, Martin I want my kid yes, to catch a foul ball in the face. What? It, it is James, James PB. I was 99% sure. And then I'm like, wait a minute, that's his channel. Um, and I did ask you, Martin, what's the event that you and uh, Nathan have uh, at the Space Center? What day it is that? So put that in the chat. Oh, and the video that really caught my eye this week, and you know which one that is, is the seven and a half mile frozen lake laser test. Oh, you know, Jibby Jedi says he was raging at somebody in Pancho Peach chat the other day. So I don't want to, I'll never take a side in things that I had no part in, but I do want to not just say he's a great guy. And then somebody else here is saying, but he did bad stuff. So I, I I'm expressing that he's been a great guy to me. Jimmy saying he did some bad stuff in a chat, you know, you know, we all I'll go take crazy. The, I'll take the stance. While. I'll take the stance of, uh, who's the guy that the Rodney, Rodney King, the uh, yeah. can we all just get along? You remember when he was? They pushed him up in the front of the podium after L.A. was burning down. I don't even know if any of that stuff was really real. Was he the, the riots? Of course they were. <laughs> oh come on! No, no, it was real. It was real. You know, well, the cops got off, and then you know, the entire black population of Los Angeles decided they were just going to burn everything, and so they pushed Rodney King up on the podium. He goes, "Can't we all just get along?" He said like three or four times, and 
I think he was on a whole bunch of mood stabilizers and he still looked like a wreck. Mm. Anyway, the seven and a half mile laser test. It was great. Is that where we were before we went off into the weeds? Off into the weeds, yeah. Seven and a half mile laser test by a brand new flat earth, well, fl brand new flat earth guy, in my opinion. Oh, crap. Well, he's got, a, he's got a big channel, though. Yeah, 50, 50 60,000 subscribers. But he, up until now, he only did mechan instructional videos on mechanical things. Like how, how to fix your distributor cap on a 57 Hemi. You know, it was really a, a gearhead. And, and then the, the channel is the original channel that, that put that out. Grout A1. Yeah. It's all run together. It's G-R-O-U-T and then the letter A and then one. Grout A1. They've got 65,000 subscribers. Yeah. And based out of Canada, I believe. Or at least the laser test was done in Canada over a frozen lake which is pretty amazing water level frozen yeah and you you reduce the the atmospheric effects down to almost nothing because you're going across a frozen lake he has a snowmobile i mean it was perfect for him because he's a gearhead and so he gets snowmobiles with lasers and then flat lights on the other side and over seven and a half miles he shows he says look the lights are there the lasers hitting we can go the distance it was perfect the potter's clay picked up on it and mirrored that. Um, also, Dorje Daka did, and uh, of course, Globusters did, and a couple other people too. So it was one of those videos that a lot of people decided to share to help promote the content provider and just the whole idea. So Yeah, and that's how, and that's how it happens. You've got a guy who has nothing. He's never even done a conspiracy video. He watches a video, and he sits on the laser test. He's like, Pfft. I could simulate that right now. Well, the lake's frozen, but that shouldn't be any problem. And he did it. And yeah, the lake went. being frozen, I think, made it easier. Made it better. It made yeah. it better because then you can throw all that haze and all that blurring away, you know, where the bird's diving into nothingness. And you can throw that all out the window. It's, it's great. And he did it at night. It was fantastic. So does anybody have any sort of question that they want to ask? I'm in the chat. Does anybody have any question they want to ask about any little thing? It doesn't matter what it means. Ask may about the be. conference. If you guys have suggestions about who should be at the conference that hasn't been uh, yeah. invited. And don't Zern say Music is in the chat. Hello, Zern. And uh, Fred Caldwell adds that, yeah, there's no swells on a frozen lake. Nope. Um, we've got Dennett Sindley saying hello from Denmark. Leslie Beckwith uh, says that Martin is the nicest person I've ever witnessed in my whole life, all day long. Think about it. So you are making this how things are your friends. I don't know what I don't know what the rest of it is, but Martin is one of the nicest people that I've ever met, and I've met him in person. So cool. Um, Ginger Sugarbush is going to the convention. Yay! Cool. Zern There's Music says Zern should be invited. Yeah, to do some music. That would be really There's cool. There's going to be just to be there. By the time this thing comes around, we're going to have over 200 tracks that we can use. It, so. You know, I hope that some of the people who are music makers within the Flat Earth, like CERN and FEA uh, and others, will. Ian. Uh, yeah. Uh, Ian, Ian Leahy and oh my gosh, there's so many others will. Well, will come yeah. And yeah. to the event. And, and Thomas Scott News. Yeah, exactly. So, does anybody have any questions about anything or statements? Teresa Gordon also agrees about fl flat Earth. We well, almost blocked Teresa accidentally. Wait. Oh, because she was going to say his name. No, no. It, I just cl sometimes if you click on somebody accidentally, you can block them if you're using a phone because you're scrolling and it's very sensitive. So. Zern says he'll be there to jam. Yeah, like bring your guitar. That's what I'm saying. It doesn't matter if you're a speaker or a presenter or a panel member. If you're a musician, just bring your, your equipment with you. And there, it's going to be structured because Robbie D and Brian are planners and they've, they're making sure this thing goes without a hitch. But right. there will be opportunities for that to happen. I, I just know it. Even if it's after s the speaking part is done and people go retire to somebody's room and there's you know, 15, 20 people sitting around talking and someone's playing guitar and I'm, I can just or in a lobby, not a lobby, but in one of the other rooms, I can just see these sorts of things happening. Because I, the minute people stop speaking, that people aren't just going to go back to their room. No. 
So. No. And, and and by the way, Matt, if you're listening, if you're coming there and you if you end up going and you end up singing, sing shortened versions of your song. All right. No 35, 40 minute songs. This is not Woodstock. Don't do it. <laughs> Seriously, because he's like going to like some weird hybrid acoustic poetry jam, you know, where he's just free flowing and lighting musical instruments on fire exactly and there's people in bing bean bag chairs all around him snapping their fingers ah oh, let's see ray ortiz says hi patricia you said hello to my daughter and i from the bronx new york when you were tracking the sun location cool glad that you remembered that and thank you for bringing it to my mind bling bling is saying that flat earth a-hole is an awesome musician. I, I just hate the word a-hole. It's just gross. I know. What should I, know. I call him? I know it's his name. I need to get over it. Sorry. Um, oh, I should put a challenge out to uh, Tiger Dan. Tiger Dan, show up. Show up. I <laughs> dare you. <laughs> show Bob up. Bob Buster says FEA versus VB validation boy in a bass off. And we could add Martin Liebke to that because he recently bought a bass or got a bass. So. Here's That'd here's the cool. thing about trolls because I've I, as you know I've been doing a few more comments in there just kind of playing with the trolls every once in a while, and some people will say oh I'm totally common you know obviously they're not, but I try to try to be kind of it's like so you're gonna be registering for this thing mm -hmm. you know use all your information yeah. and you know credit the whole nine yards you're actually you're doing the breaking the first rule of trolldom which is not being anonymous. Yeah, the patrols, I can't imagine they're going to be there. Um, I, I don't think so either. One infamous flat earth troll uh, was saying that he's going to go and troll people. But he if he goes and stays in the hotel and registers to be able to go inside and see the speeches and such, uh, he would have to show his uh, ID. And also we'd see his face unless he came in wearing a mask. And I can bet your bottom dollar if anybody comes in wearing a, a literal mask, they'll be like grabbed by security cards. Exactly. I, I think what he was trying to say is he would be trolling outside, making fun of people who he recognizes. Fine. Make well, that's, fun of that's us. short lived because like, there's multiple like, oh, entrances. Flatters, there's a stupid, whatever. <laughs> that's what would be said. Whatever. Yeah. So, I mean, you could, well, I won't give him ideas. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> hmm. uh, let's see. You know what? What? We didn't ask the capacity of the venue. What no, that's what I was trying to ask. That's yeah. what I, I was trying to ask. Well, I know the levels. I, I, I know that they can, they can, it can be pretty big. Okay. So how big can it be? That's what she said, but that's not where we're going right now. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I wasn't even going down that path, mm -hmm. but thank you for for taking it straight into the gutter. Right. Well, the, uh, less than just less than a thousand is the okay. Is the, is the That's cap. a good number for the first one. Yeah, That's a great number. Yeah. So, but they but they're gonna they're gonna do it in stages. I'm not gonna give away the numbers, but if they hit a certain mark, then they're gonna they're gonna have to reconfigure. Then the hotel changes the, the contract gets changed. The hotel's like, okay, we're going to reconfigure the room and then, or add another room or add whatever. Did you they get have to your do. room yet? I didn't Did know. I get it yet? No, not yet. Maybe we should. I don't well, mean together. Don't anybody get the wrong idea. I just mean that maybe we or anybody who's planning on going shouldn't just say, oh, I have a ticket. But I'm yeah. just going to book the room later. Yeah, I'd better, you know, I, it's a good idea. I'll, because, yeah. well, yeah, and I'm sure Robbie, well, it's a little different though with the hotel because the hotel's, they're the only ones that are going to know how many rooms are left. Mm -hmm. But there's going to be other hotels around there, this so I'm not true. too worried. But you're right. You're right. I better. I, better I want to be it. right there, conveniently located. Right. Um, Pale Queens is saying, "I hope it doesn't sell out before Friday." No, I don't. No, think no, no. It's not. No, it's not going to sell. No, the VIPs are gone, but the general admission is still there, and they'll let us know. But I don't know if they're going to again. I don't think they're going to. I think they're just going to keep expanding until they hit the utmost cap. So they're not going to say in the first level there's twenty something left, and then you know I think they're just going to wait till it maxes out completely. <laughs> Nora, no one's flower writes. I hope that Tim Osman will come so we kick him up the backside. <laughs> well, no, isn't Tim? But we wouldn't. We wouldn't do that. We would basically just 
just isn't he better now better you mean mentally well no i mean i forgot it is you know how it goes is is he still launching attacks or is oh, he yeah. is of course well who am i thinking of validation boy no no validation boy oh no 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 you're thinking of the guy who called you and you thought it was a private conversation but you didn't say anything weird and he recorded it and then made videos about it right that's tim osborne oh and he's still he's still hanging around yeah, yeah. but validation boy um is you know just regular guy still doing videos um just maybe a little different videos but still speaking his mind and being uh, wait a minute there he is in chat he says people would enjoy jake's bass playing more than mine because validation boy plays the bass as well uh but he plays slap style which can fly on its own uh vv says he's more of a background bass player so would you mind if i addressed the john Lebon issue real quick oh yeah sure please you well, go right ahead well because he did a, he did a video if i'm not mistaken called no refunds on flat earth yes just an opportunity to just poke fun at flat earthers well th but but also he's got to remember and robbie said look the the hotel the the contract they signed with the hotel the same thing it it works this way which That's is how any event is there's nothing special about this event that it's some kind of a scam that we're no. ripping people off if you rent a convention hall you've got to assure those people that they're going to receive the money because otherwise they could rent it to somebody else exactly that could pay for it so exactly so look you oh. got yeah and if you commit to go you're going no like people who have wedding receptions you have to pay right. for that hall or that restaurant or wherever you're having it you, yeah it doesn't matter if the the wedding breaks up or you know you don't it's, it's gr excellent point the, the yeah. wedding's the perfect example because how many horror stories have we heard it's like i already rented the hall there's I no actually refund know a horror story about some people that were engaged and it didn't work out at all but yeah yeah it's another story oh i got i got one for you real quick there was a i'm not going to name names there was a debutante that lived a couple doors down who pulled some strings in in seattle and got this massive venue right you know, it was, I think the governor attended type wedding and within like shortly afterwards, the guy came out of the closet. <laughs> oh, wow. She didn't know. She didn't know. And it's, I, mean, I mean, I get to blame her. It's like, how did you not know? Right. And, but, but he actually went through with the wedding. So who's, who's the worst, worst person in that case? And wait, so they got married even if he's out of the closet. No, no, no. He came out of the closet after like less than a year after oh, the wedding. After they married. After oh. they married. But the point was she pulled, they, they pulled all the, like a one-time deal. The only time you could get this venue and all, you know, the, the, the one of the biggest weddings in, in, of the year in, in that, in Seattle and all for, all for not. That's sad. Yeah. But at least they got to use the venue. The point is the venues aren't refundable. <laughs> right, exactly. That's what we're trying so, to say. And so certain YouTube providers making fun of the people putting together this conference and saying there's no refunds on Flat Earth. Yeah. Uh, well, what do you want? You know, the people who are speaking and the people who are organizing to put up a lot of money for it. And then if uh if you decide not to go that money's going toward paying for the chairs people are sitting in i mean to yeah. rent the space um and and, and john was saying normal. that john was saying that, that, that well what if people back out of the speaking engagements i'm going look this that's isn't never like gonna a, happen yeah this isn't like a zeppelin concert where it's a one-time deal look there's a whole battery of people and right. they all really want to be there the fact that they all said we're going Right. This if early, somebody got sick or had a family emergency and couldn't go, there would be ten people to step up and fill that person's place. Yeah. Oh yeah. There's not. Yeah. It's not. It's not anything like that. And I know he was just taking his shots and. And also, whatever. he was making a video to get hits. Don't, can't mm. blame him there. Can't blame no. him. That's no. what people do. Yep. It's that oh, those who can't do teach, but in some different sort of way. Those who can't do make videos about others. I know that makes no sense, but it does make sense. Yeah. So. I <laughs> Bob, thought it, had, Bob has a funny comment about JLB, but I won't read it. <laughs> hey, I, I can't I can't really knock the guy. He hasn't really said that much. Ain't, well, I can't remember the last thing he said that about me, but I enjoyed the round, round tables of 2015. So did I. I really did. I think that's his finest work.
I thought they were and really great, and I thought he, he could have. Uh, other good videos, truth seeking videos, but just random slamming videos. Yeah, over that, done with that. Not funny, not interesting, not smart, not cool. Yeah. I, I, hey, let's 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 call this what it is. If he wants, if he wanted to, there's so much time between now and there, he could get right back into this thing, and attend. Oh, he doesn't believe in. He doesn't believe in the shape of the earth the, the way we do. Um, he doesn't believe that we live on a spinning globe either, though. So. Um, I think so it's, under, totally, it's undefined. Well, I, I maybe he's got more geocentrist beliefs, but the thing is, is that I'm totally fine with John Lebon's viewpoints on things completely. He has a right to that belief, and we really don't exactly know, but we know it's not what NASA tells us. We know that part is incorrect. Got it. And um, anyway, eh. making fun eh. of other people when you could actually be doing more good work. I don't know. I think it's a waste of talent. And he's a talented, smart guy. But instead, you want to play the jerk. Okay. That's how you want to go down reputation-wise. Yeah. That's on you. I Regardless, this thing's happening. And yeah. it's going to be... You can't stop it. No one can't, can't stop, stop it. it. So it's it's going to be... Oh, it's going to be so wonderful. <laughs> oh, can't, can't wait. It's going to be cool. Um, let's see. Ah. Somebody, uh, Martin is saying that if Russian vids attended, that would be interesting. Well, he remains anonymous, so he won't be he won't be attending. Oh, or he may. Remember, if you're completely yeah, we would never even know. Yeah, we wouldn't know who it was. I mean, s s seriously, you could show up, register as whoever you were, re record everything, and then unless we knew, it's like, oh yeah, I remember this guy filming this. Unless you actually keep, put, I mean, you might be able to pick pick out a face, but that's it. That's all mm -hmm. you get. So yeah, you could pull it off. Russian vids could show up. That would be cool. And do a documentary. And oh, let's 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 throw some more stuff out there. Yeah. Anybody that wants to do a documentary on this, whoever's, oh, yeah. oh this is your chance. This is your opportunity. You want production value? show up to this thing because you don't have to go in. It's a one-stop shop. Everybody that you want to talk to is going to be there for the most part. I actually know somebody who would be perfect for this. And his first name is Robert. And he's a friend of mine. And he came- Not and, Robert, Robert. Well, he came and filmed um, the um, Houston meetup. Oh, different guy, different April. Robert. Yeah. So- um, somebody asked about the guitar in the background that is here over my shoulder. And do I play this Sheridan Epiphone? No, I do not. But I have intentions to play it. Um, I want to play it. And I've had it for quite a while and haven't played it. And it was in its case. Case is on the floor. Let me tilt my screen on my MacBook. There's the case. Um, I have an amp as well. Let me move myself. And yeah, There's I wouldn't be messing with that. Yeah, I can see it. No, no, you can see the amp. Yeah, right there, right. There. Right. right there. <laughs> so you 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 throw down a wicked axe from time to time. Well, no, I mean I can play around on it, but I'm not good. Oops, I almost knocked my microphone over. Uh, no, so can I play it very poorly? And I'm going to have somebody teach me how to play it right on. better than what I do. So. That's my plan. And it's yeah. right there to remind me it's out. And I think that's the key with many things in life. Leave it out, the thing that you want to do, as opposed right. to put it away. Whenever you put it away, let's say you want to be an artist and you bought some uh, paints or something. Don't put them away. Leave them out and you'll have more chances or opportunities or reminders to, to start you know, playing around with that. I'm still right. working on my house, so I still haven't had uh, a chance to do it. Today I had trees trimmed in the front and back, and I've never paid attention to trees being trimmed in my life before because I've never owned a house before. I've seen road crews come with that, I think they call it like a cherry picker bucket in America yep. that's mount, I don't know what they call it in the UK or elsewhere, but it's a bucket that's on a mechanized arm that people stand in, and then they take big clippers and clip branches off trees. Well, these were just guys. Of course, everyone's just guys. These were guys without that sort of bucket climbing up on my roof with tall ladders. And my roof's really pretty high. And just, you know, the branches had grown out of control and were growing over other people's property and over my roof and could be dangerous. And this is the time to prune. And they were pruning the tree. And I was just hearing these thuds of you know, dead limbs falling. And it was really crazy and scary, but that took several hours. And uh, so that's why, well, could I have fooled around with my guitar then? 
yeah, but you know how it is. Uh, you, you have a whole bunch of good intentions to do something, but other things get in the way. And before you know it, you're not doing those things that you want to do, which is why I put it out to remind me. So keep I, mentioning it in my videos. <laughs> have you started playing the guitar yet? Because other shame me into it. <laughs> I, I Look, I'm an enabler. I'll quote Homer Simpson. If something's hard to do, then it's not worth doing. <laughs> sometimes that's true, though. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes in life, I don't mean playing the guitar, but if you're in a relationship or a job, which is essentially a relationship, or anything you're trying to accomplish, if it's very hard, meaning obstacles seem to be coming in front of you all of the time, it may be not the right thing for you. The old saying is, and I'm a huge believer in it, when anyone says, oh, I'm not happy doing what I'm doing, it's going, look, it, it, it was easy. One, if it was easy, everyone would do it. Right. The second one is, if you find a job you love, you'll never work a day in your life. Very Plain true. and simple. Uh, and that's again, why one of the reasons I think I'm doing what I'm doing here. Yes. I, and it, this isn't a job. We're not paid to do this. Uh, no, no, but, but it's, I it's love it. I, I okay. do. I, I love doing this and it came so easily and in so many different aspects that I knew it was the right thing because again, no resistance on any sides and who knows, you know, what the, what the conference is going to bring. Oh yeah. Which reminds me segue into the conference thing again mm -hmm. and people are gonna say mark stop talking about the conference yeah you you think three months from now you're gonna be wishing for these days because i'm i'm never i'm not slowing down the anybody that's been sending me stuff you know i get i get swag all the time you know posters and watches and all sorts of little flatter things like oh show this stuff off anybody that makes that stuff should show up i don't mm -hmm. know who I don't know who these people are. Most of them that like the guy that did the paintings out of Oregon show up mm -hmm. the, the guy from Zazzle that's got, I don't know, 20 different shirts and show up, get a freak. Oh, cause there's booth. There's, um, there's tables. You can, there's not only are there presenters, but there's exhibitors booths. So, uh, Chris Pontius, who's doing the 3d models, he's going to be there. Pretty sure the coffee table guy is going to be there, Corey and whatever else is going to be there if you've got a great flat earth idea for for uniting the the, the flat earth community whatever it is bring it even mm. if you don't have a booth bring it and uh show off exactly and you know it it's an opportunity to get your merchandise out there and people are like oh you're going to be making money off the sale of t-shirts well no, no it's, we're not it's <laughs> whoever's I mean, selling them is the one making the money it's so. it's not about the money as much as it is about the symbolism which is people want they want flat earth stuff they want something tangible to hold on to i mean that's why pontius is models because oh the model isn't accurate it's like look he's one of the only guys making models if you're making a freaking three you know flat earth frisbees you know how much uh, how many different things you can do with, with flat earth people want something to hold on to when i when i did the mixer back in uh, you know last year i just can't made posters i had nicole cote make posters for me another flat earther and people were just thrilled with just getting the posters and i and i gave some, the same sort of swag as they call it the same yeah. merchandise away when i did my flat earth mixer oh that's right you got the refrigerator magnets too didn't you yeah those were awesome yeah and we didn't even ask for those no yeah, people just earth flat earth they just them. made them up those were the coolest things bob of globebuster says that Corey is making uh he and cammy one of those coffee tables and that's uh he can hardly wait for that so that's going to be cool yeah the, the, the coffee thing. tables are awesome <laughs> really uh they lie ohio uh it uh, plays guitar. He says his fingers know what to do on the guitar. Nice. Um, some people are good at, you know, naturally can pick up a musical instrument and pick out a tune. I can kind of by ear pick out a tune, but I don't know how to play the chords. Really. That's the thing I can pick out on one note. That's not playing guitar. So right. that's just playing around. Um, you know Domination what? Boy says guitar is easy after you've played every day for 28 years. <laughs> Indeed. Nice. Very true. Do you know what would be cool is I what the, one of the little side things I'm kind of anticipating for this is because you see it if you I don't know how many different conventions you've been to over the years, but I used to do video clothing, game con clothing convention when I yeah, owned it. Those are all right. Uh, I used to do video game conventions. 
mm. back in the day, like E3 and Mac World and stuff like that. And every once in a while, you'll get a B-list celeb mm -hmm. that'll show up that's into whatever it is. And I would love to see, you know, all of a sudden somebody show up, you know, unannounced. Don't okay. tell us you're going to show up and be like, oh, yeah, I'm here to pick up a couple T-shirts and sit in on a couple things and shake hands. And I think that'd be that really cool. awesome. That would be really know. cool. I don't know. Plus, again, send out – You, we were talking about this earlier, which is whoever it is. I don't care if you're trying to attack us or not. Joe Rogan should send out a freaking team, not necessarily himself, but he should be there. Or, or some one of his people should should be there. Uh, Alex Jones should send a team. Russia Today should send a team. The Young Turks should send people. If anyone out there, and we'll we'll talk about this more as the months go on. But shoot a thing to anyone in the alternative media and mainstream media, and say, look, the nuttiest thing you've ever thought would could possibly happen is actually going to happen. You guys should go there and, and cover it and see what sort of lunacy is going to be involved. And um, if you're listening to this, if you just popped in on this live show and you're wondering, what are they talking about in the description box? Uh, the Flat Earth International Conference, FEIC 17, is a link. And click on that and you'll get all the details about the event. Yeah. It's in November and it's in Raleigh, North Carolina. Uh, William Thompson uh, posts here what we started our show off talking about. The words Google Flat Earth found carved into a mountain in really, really big letters. You can oh, in Riverside. Why. Yeah. Right. That, that came out just today on CBS. Uh, and they were kind of confused by it. It's like, well, wait. The, the words are flat earth were were gone now it just well they're gone now but Google. when the when the cameras got there they were there where's I, the pictures oh, of that oh i i was watching it it was there okay uh, good because it, the story that i shared on my two facebooks and youtube only showed the scratched out part where they somebody scratched out flat earth but left google why would they do that that's so that's weird. interesting yeah. yeah so you leave google <laughs> the corporate Maybe google did it Oh, yeah, wow. Google did it, right? I Free Google they advertising like yep. they need it. Exactly. Yeah. But again, oh. who, whoever did that, and, and they got him. It's not like it was anonymous. They actually got the guy, and they would, didn't know if they were going to press charges because what are you going to get him for? You know, defacing a hillside? Nature. I don't even know what... <laughs> uh, this, uh, uh, landscape vandalism? I don't, even, I don't even know what the charge is. But they weren't sure if they were going to charge him with anything. But whoever he is, somebody contact somebody so we know. So, did you film it? Did you actually, like, somebody have a camera? Because they said it took hours to do. Yeah. Did you do Somebody's it at night? Saying, um, Alex Jones was the last guy I'd want there or anyone affiliated with InfoWars. Oh, you know, we agree about that. But what we're saying is if somebody like that showed up at this event, it would get it lots of PR. Oh, and yeah. Then if they talked about it on their stupid shows, there are a few audience members who would be like, wow, that sounds interesting. And then they would look into the shape. Oh, it's of the free not press. It's great. Yeah. Now, granted, yeah, you know, they'll look for, and I'm not going to, I shouldn't say the weakest link, but they'll look for the strangest out of place person they can. Mm -hmm. And so they'll be talking to you is what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my God. Seriously, you should write that down. The, um, <laughs> It's no, no, you can. I would love to be interviewed by just about anyone that walks down, you know, regardless of what they're looking for, because their their first impulse is going to be. So you guys are obviously completely insane. You know, it, it's it is, it's going to go down as the most insane conference of all time. That's mm -hmm. that's how it, the mainstream is going to pay is going. In, in fact, it's going to be the prophecy fulfilled for uh, NDT. Notice how I'm not saying his name which is that where he said on Comedy Central, a growing, what was it, a wave of anti community of anti-intellectualism that if left unchecked could bring about the end of civilization as Ball we Ball earthers it. they're talking about? Yeah, there you go. There you go. Um, but but that's, what that, that's what he's kind of, you know, the fact that this conference is happening Yes. It's got to be so frightening to, to science. And they haven't, you know, it's only been a week. So they haven't even absorbed this yet. But the fact that this is growing and growing and growing, it's like, oh, wait, they're meeting, they're organizing. It's got to be a scary yeah. thing. And this is the first one. It's not going to be huge and it's going to progress. So, and it's all up to us to make it progress by attending and by supporting those who are attending, making mm -hmm. videos, talking about it, talking about it in your, your live hangouts and not, yeah. not dissing it, giving it a chance.
because this, if you believe that the shape of the earth is not a ball, no matter what, if you believe we live in a realm or in a puddle or you're a geocentrist, we're all on the same side attacking the ball. So there are, there's room for you to come to if your belief is different than Mark's or than Eric's or than Math's or mine. I don't think anybody there has the same belief system. That's I just I just thought of something which was that, because you and I won't be doing it probably because we're going to be busy, but people are going to go home like like the first night, like what is it, a Thursday and a Friday? Mm -hmm. Thursday and Friday. So like the Thursday night, people will be, people will be phoning the whole thing and then going back to their hotel room, firing it up on YouTube. Who's going to be the first person to do, oh, here's what happened today at the conference. You know, well, that's in a good addition, idea. In addition to the live stream, and I don't know if the live stream that Robbie's going to be doing is going to also going to be simulcast and recorded to YouTube. Yeah. But there's going to be so many videos that people are going to say, oh, this is what I did at the conference. They're going to document their own conference. Oh, geez. It's going to Here's be what my room looks like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Look, look there goes Matt Boylan. <laughs> <laughs> Funny. Um, Patricia uh, Steer sighting. <laughs> Um, uh, let's see. Stock jockey. I wanted to say hello to stock jockey and there's somebody else, uh, Issa Mahalski, uh, as well as in our chat underground Johnny and so many, Oh, Israel Adams is here as well. Um, let's see. Da, da, da. I already said knowledge scavenger, I think. Um, and Zoe would be here in love and Andres and, so many other people. I appreciate everyone showing up. It's been a pretty good turnout for uh, a secret show. This yeah. doesn't seem like it's much of a secret. No, but at least the secret's out. Now we don't have to dance around anymore. I know. It was hard. And a few people guessed and wrote me and they knew that there was something. Well, yeah. But it's, again, I, I, I am not going to be able to overstate this. It is the... Event of it, the year. Well, no, it's the coalescing of... Everybody that wanted, so many people wanted this because you will feel part of a family finally. Uh, you know, even if, because you, you've heard all the horror stories. Oh, I told my, all my family at Thanksgiving and they all wanted to have me committed. And this is the opposite of that. This is going there and all of a sudden realizing that it, it cements, it confirms everything that, that you will believed in up until now but again until you physically are around everybody knowing that everybody in that room with you is on the same page mm -hmm. that's powerful yeah it's going to be great it's going to be memorable it's going to be one of those kind of things that when you come back you'll be changed you definitely yeah. will be yeah do we have time for one email i've been very lax on the emails oh let's do an email sure why not all right here we go letters we get letters we, we get, get letters lots and lots of letters Something along those lines, yeah. Hey, Perry, something, something. Yeah, from the, that's from the Perry Como show. From Perry Como show. back before even my time. What are you talking about? You're like 29. Yeah, yeah, exactly. No. <laughs> uh, here we go. Here's the question from Brian Ezrin. We know Brian, of course, and uh, he has a twin brother named Ron. And uh, Brian has a wife named Martha. So this is kind of... Kind of from all of them. It's a lengthy question. Oh boy. Ready? <laughs> They're up in Canada. There's been a question on my mind for some time. As far as I can tell, no flat earth proponent has addressed this issue in depth on YouTube. In one of your well-known flat earth introductory videos, Mark, you take up a study of Admiral Richard Byrd's explorations into Antarctica. Please clarify for me a certain comment that Admiral Byrd made on a TV interview shortly before his death. He said that his team had discovered an unexplored area of land at least as large as the entire United States inside the Antarctic. According to your theory, Mark, Brian says, if I understand it correctly, you describe the entire Antarctic as a very frozen wasteland, extremely frigid, very incompatible with any land-dwelling life except for a group of emperor penguins, confirmed by Bird's ob observations. But Bird's discovery of an unknown landmass would also suggest a terrain with a possibly more temperate climate, unless I am mistaken. And Bird actually discovered mere frozen and barren wasteland, which would be more compatible with your own model of a very inhospitable, inhospitable terrain. Would you be able to comment on what Admiral Richard Byrd actually saw when he explored the Southern Hemisphere? 
How would it relate to your own understanding of the shape of the Antarctic and how would it alter our current variations of flat earth maps? So that's, that's the whole thing. Yeah. What he's talking well, about. That's from Brian Ezrin. But and, Brian, uh, Brian's such a nice guy. He is a nice guy. He's a nice guy. He's, he encloses a picture of himself and his wife, Martha, arm in arm. Love that. <laughs> that's great. For Brian, and I know he's probably listening to the entire show. Is like, oh, I, what? when are they going to read that letter? Are they going to read my email? Yeah, I have a bunch of people who I said next week I'll read your email, and then I forgot. So, do you know? I think I read like three emails the entire night last night. The phone just would not stop ringing. Yeah, which is which is great. Well, okay, Brian, what he's talking about is Flat Earth Clue Two, otherwise known as the Bird Wall, in which Admiral Bird. It was. <laughs> Kind of shortly before his death, it was one of his last interviews, which was in 1954 on the Long Jeans Chronoscope, L O N G I N I I N E S. What? It's a watch company. Long yeah, watch company. Watch. Uh, the the 60 minutes of its day, where he goes on and he says that in in short that there's an area that he saw, or at least projected on, on maps that was past the South Pole that was at least as big as the United States, which nobody had seen, including him. He basically said, look, if I haven't seen it, nobody's seen it because I'm the world's greatest explorer. He wasn't an e he didn't have an ego, but that's what he was saying. He was. He was like the front man for all this stuff. So what I postulated was that he was flying around there for 30 years. Did he reach some green land area? No, I don't think so. I think he reached an area where again, because I believe in the enclosed world and there's some sort of barrier that the Antarctic gets to a certain point and that you cannot go any further than that. And that barrier, you know, some people, you know, Matt will say, well, you know, there's more land and there's another continent and other civilizations. Like, fine, you can go that way too. But either way, whatever he discovered was so big and so jarring to an average person's psyche that at that point, he comes back and that's when they started the, the sealing off of Antarctica entirely to where, you know, all corporations have been forbidden sent from 1959 all the way through 2041 until revision. Even then they'll just kick that can down the road. Uh, civilians can go to the outlying islands, but as far as Admiral Byrd goes, I think he knew a lot. Of course, I, he was the front man. He was looking for something for 30 years. And even if you didn't tell him exactly what he was supposed to be looking for, I think he figured it out, which is why when he died in 1957, it seemed like natural causes, but he was in his mid 60s and he was a lifelong explorer and excellent health, mil career military man. And I think they just couldn't necessarily trust him with the information and so that's why because he was doing press tours every time he wasn't doing explorations he was traveling around the world and people were more than happy to interview him and they realized look uh, he's gonna blow it eventually so let's you know make sure he has a heart attack when he's at home in boston wow and that's basically what happened in, in my opinion so did i roll did i think do i think he reached the edge yeah i do now, was it the edge that the science loves making fun of? Like, oh, you know, an edge, you, you, know, you just fall off and it's space. And, you know, no, no, no. I think he reached some sort of marker or barrier that indicated that the world was not a globe. And at that point, the United States and the Soviet Union had to make their decisions. And you know, NASA was formed. You know the rest of the story. It's, uh, But, yeah, I, I think Admiral Byrd did know. No no question. And Here's a question. Um thinking about flights um we we've recently had um max egan take the flight that many people thought didn't exist so that changes things a little bit the flight does indeed exist what is your take on that does it destroy any of your clues no 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 not at all the in fact you gotta remember that when i did clue seven i said look there's there's i can't find any freaking flights down there the southern hemisphere and then people said no there's at least you know the, the the one that killed me was Qantas flight 64 the fact that everybody kept pointing at the same flight that that didn't bug me as much as that they were ignoring that 95 percent of all flights in the southern hemispheres take these weird connections but it doesn't bother me that the, that a flight exists people I know will latch onto that and say oh no the flight doesn't exist it's fake I'm going, no I don't know if it's fake but there's so few of them and that it should raise some alarm bells. The, the big two things, though, there are, one, 
is you can't prove the route. Even if you're on the plane, you can't prove the route because your latitude and longitude absolutely blink off. They disappear and that should be, out, that should be impossible. And the and second Max thing was, is... Uh, Max was saying the compass was, he was walking around the flight during it and was saying that the compass was changing based on whether or not he was near the engine of the plane or something. That's weird too. Yeah. I mean, there's so many little things about the plane or, the, you know, if you take a bubble level, the little things, like you take a bubble level and you put it on, on, your, on your drink tray and it registers perfectly flat when you're flying at cruising altitude and it, you never see it dip even though the plane should be dipping if there's a curve. If it's eight inches per mile squared, every hundred miles, which is covered pretty quickly in a plane, you should be feeling some nose down or nose up. It just goes on and on. So no, it doesn't. It does not bother me because we all know there is some problem. It, Bob's working on it. Tiger Dan was working on it. There's people been working on. It. There's a problem with scale when it comes to the flat Earth. Yes, the UN map I still think is the closest thing we've got, but there's something going on with the scale that they can't release in maps because it would give people too much of a hint. So it's like, okay, we'll use this projection. That's what you're going to get. But the real, the the real scale is still a big secret. So we know that we know there's something wrong, but it doesn't matter if you're if you're on that plane or not because you can't prove the route. And that has not changed. Uh, even even since we were taught, you know, two years later after it released the clues, because we just crossed the two year mark since I, I released the clues back in 2015. They still have it, you know, you're still flying blind when you get out over water. The, the, their, the GPS, their graphic will be there, but if you click on the plane, the latitude and longitude changes from, from numbers to estimated or approximated. That should not be possible if you're talking about blanket coverage from a GPS system. You, you know, you've heard this, this from me. Yes, I have. And so I have heard some people saying recently that they are, aren't going to look into the flat earth anymore after that flight. Only a few people. <laughs> Why? They, uh, well, they're you know they're saying, oh, that just blows the clues out of the water, no. no. and they're just uh, not really looking more deeply into. It, that's that's because they're hanging on. That that's why the clues have worked as well as they did because the flu, the clues word I don't use want to use too many gun references is a shotgun pattern approach, which is I'm sending so much stuff at you in a spread pattern, you might be able to pick off a couple here and there, maybe slow them down, but the rest are getting through. So when it came to the flight, does, does, does a legitimate, does Qantas Flight 64 disprove the flat earth? No, no, not at all. It, does, it, does it mess with some of the scale in the Southern Hemisphere? Yeah, possibly, possibly, but you still can't prove the route. So no, there's no, you've heard me say this before, which is there is no silver bullet for flat earth. It does not exist. If, if it did exist, some scientists either anonymously or publicly or for ego reasons would have shot this thing down in the first two months. And they didn't. If they could have, Bill Nye would have done it on television. NDT would have done it on television. If anybody would have come on or find find me a debunker, you know all you know. There's some, been some so, some solid debunkers out there that have gone after this thing. The um the line that I used from my interview on Dark Thirty Radio. Remember when I was supposed to interview or debate Richard Hoagland? Yes. And Brian Dunning comes on, and I, I don't want to drag this out because I know that you wrap up the show here pretty soon. Which is. I, when I asked him, it was this moment of clarity, you know, because I'm going to be debating another guy hopefully next week, but it's not going to be streaming, but we'll get to that later, maybe next week when, I, when we talk, which is, I, so I go, Brian, I go, pretend I'm a man on the street. How do you prove to me as a scientist that it's a globe down here on the ground? Can you run a test? And he, it, he absolutely threw me for a loop because you know what? I couldn't do it. Like, what are you talking about? And he goes, I, I thought for sure you just throw out some stuff. And he goes, no, no, I couldn't do it. It cannot be done on the ground. No scientist can prove that it's a globe from the ground. The best I can do is give you $20 million, send you up into space. Only then would you know for sure, which goes into the whole Matt Boylan argument. Sooner or later, you have to get up high enough to take a picture. Otherwise, you don't know anything. It's still, you're still just telling people you don't know for sure. And that's what I got. All right. 
Thank you for that. Thank you for clearing it up for anybody who's thinking, well, I'm going back to the globe. Oh, please try. Yeah, I mean, you can't. And that doesn't mean that you're going to call yourself a flat earther. Call yourself whatever you want. But it's us against the globe. Right. And that's the way I like to look at it. So we're all on the same team in the end. It's been a good secret show, you think? Yeah. yeah. I think so. Are you kidding? Thanks. We announced the big, big thing and... And we had Robbie D and Brian Mullen. And like I've said a couple of times, I'll say it one more time. In the description box of this video, you will find the link that will take you to the website for the Flat Earth Conference that's happening in Raleigh, North Carolina, November 9th and 10th. And I don't want to sound like a broken record, but there we go. <laughs> <laughs> I, I you don't want to repeat that. yourself. You don't want to be redundant. You don't exactly. want to say the same thing over and over. No, not at all, right. ever. All right, until we meet again, that concludes episode 144 of The Secret Show on Flat Earth and Another Hot Potatoes. You got anything coming up, Mark? Anything interesting? Anything fascinating? Anything with a wow? I was gonna I was gonna mark it just when you were closing the show. The what, do I have any somebody? wow moments coming up? Yeah, oh. you're gonna interview somebody and be really nice to them, and then they're gonna turn against you. Anything like that happen? <laughs> oh, I see what you did there. Yeah. Uh, no, no, no. I'm going to hopefully debate a scientist next week. Ooh. But I, I don't want to jinx it because, as you know, they are thin on the ground. It is tough to find anybody in science that are, are willing to do that. Uh, other than that, just again, just hyping up. I'm going to be pushing this conference thing as much as I can and keep doing shows with you, keep doing Strange World and just keep, you know, keep spreading the word. What, what, what's happening? Is there a cat? You know, I have never seen you wear the same thing <laughs> twice. I have a lot your, of clothes. Your I wardrobe guess. department is got a way bigger <laughs> well, budget than mine. I clothing store. I don't buy new clothes, but um, you know, not into doing that anymore, but I have a lot of clothes. This is Flynn and he's recovered from his urinary tract that he had. I was talking about, he's totally fine. And he's been basking in the hot lights that I have on my desk behind the video. So Aww, Flynn is funny. good. Hi Flynn. Oh, that's cute. He's a beautiful guy. And uh, I've got Rory, his brother on the jukebox behind me and Greer, their sister, the black cat is somewhere under my feet. Anyway, enough about cats. <laughs> okay. There's never enough about cats. I think we covered pretty much everybody on this show. So. Yes, we certainly did, including the cats. So yeah. it's been a great show. Thanks to all. Talk to you later, Mark. And that's episode 144. It's a wrap, Mark. Keep it flat.